Hello viewers, welcome back. This is Subhadra Malsami, partner at AK Malsami and Associates. So I'm here again on a very, very uh, interesting and uh, I'm sure most of you would have heard about it. The concept of geographical indication, which is uh, dealt under the intellectual property rights. And in short, it is called as the GI. The concept of geographical indication, GI, emerged with law of 1919 that established GIs as collective intellectual property and granted legal recognitions for the protection of affiliations of origin. Now, what is the indication of source? So, indication of source is nothing but it's a nomenclature that has been used in the Paris Convention, which refers to an indication of the origin of the product from a place or from a country such as made in India or product of France, etc. And such indications do not reflect the quality of the product, rather it merely shows its origin. Now, what is the affiliation of an origin? It refers to a sign that indicates that a product originates in a specific geographical region only when the characteristic qualities of the product are due to the geographical environment, including natural and human factors. Now, geographical indications as being used currently includes both the above concept and it also refers to indications which identify the goods as originating in the territory of a country or a region or locality in that particular territory where a given quality, reputation or characteristic of the goods is essentially attributed to its geographical origin. Now, what is this geographical indication? Um, it is an indication that something originates from a specific geographical territory. It is also used to identify the agricultural, natural or manufactured goods. The manufactured goods also should be produced or processed or prepared in that particular territory. It should also have a special quality or reputation or any other characteristics which is completely unique. Geographical indications also outlines the characteristics, the merits, the reputation that are presumed to be present in the product because of its connection to a specific geographical area. Now, let us look into the legal framework of this GI. So, in India, the GI or the Geographical Indication for Goods Registration and Protection Act was in 1999 in accordance with its TRIPS obligation which went off into effect on September 15, 2003. Now, it allows those that own it to prevent it being utilized by a third party whose product does not meet the applicable standards. However, it also does not allow the holder to prevent someone from producing a product with the identical techniques as those which has been specified in the indication standards as well. Now I'm going to talk about who is actually an authorized user. Now the concept of authorized user in the Indian GI law system is very, very unique. So a registered geographical indication being a community intellectual property and the registered proprietor being an organization or it is an authority, then the system of registration of the authorized user offers protection to the individual producers, manufacturers as well as the traders. Now this system ensures that a bona fide of a GI product dealt with or it is produced by a genuine person and further ensures the protection to the consumers. The most important um, aspect in GI is what is the benefit of obtaining a GI tag. Now it denotes the quality and the origin of products. It also prevents anyone from further using a registered geographical indications without any authorizations. It also prevents a product from the generic products. It also helps the consumer to get the quality products of desired traits and is assured of its authenticity. For example, Kashmir is famous for its uh, saffron. So saffron, Kashmir saffron we will say, Darjeeling tea we would say, Kanjipuram saris. So these are the GIs which is associated with the products from a particular place. 
and it also increases the demand for GI tagged goods on both the domestic and international farm markets, promoting the economic prosperity of the producers as well. It provides legal protection as well to the products. Now, few other examples which I would like to talk to you about, which will help you to understand the GI in a closer manner. As for example, we have Mysore Agarbatis. It is the GI is given to the place from which it originates, which is Mysore. Salem mangoes, for example. Uh, Bhavani Javakalam is for uh, another example. Uh, Tanjavur doll, we would say. Madurai Gundumali is a beautiful example. Then the Tanjavur Vinay, Mahabalipuram stone sculptures, Malabar peppers in Kerala. These are all few of the examples which uh, clearly denote and also have popularized the product from the origin of its place. The most uh, often asked question is how is a GI different from a trademark? Now a trademark is a sign which is used in the course of a trade and it is distinguishes the goods or services of one enterprise from another enterprise. For example, the Starbucks uh, is a coffee shop. Same way the logo which Starbucks has is completely different from the coffee shop of uh, coffee or cafe day. Uh, whereas a GI is an indication used to identify the goods having a sp special characteristics which is originating from a definite geographical territory. For example, Tirunelveli Alva, Darjeeling Tea, Coimbatore Wet Grinder. The most often asked question, when does an infringement happen? Now the act details certain offenses which is punishable by imprisonment or with a fine or with both. The legislature has taken a very strong view of infringement, piracy, uh, falsifications, misrepresentation and has now made them as penal offenses. Passing up. So when the use of a GI results in an unfair competition, including passing or in respect of the registered GI. For example, silk saris which are got from some other area in the country and sold as Kanjuram silks. Now next is unauthorized use. When an unauthorized party uses a GI indicating or suggesting origination of the same other than the true place of the origin of the goods, in a manner which may be misled in the public. Now, for example, uh, Pattamadai uh, Pai is a registered, has got a registered GI. Somebody else uses a manufacturing of the same mat and uses the name Pattamadai without being registered. False representations. When the use of another GI results in false representation to the public that the goods originate in a territory in respect of which there is a registered GI which is related to. For example, say a manufacturer buys turmeric from um, UP and he manufactures and he says that the turmeric which is used is actually from Erode and says it is Erode Manjal. I would like to sum it up by saying that GI is an important tool for protecting traditional and unique products. It helps to ensure the authenticity and the quality of the product, protects the reputation of the region and its local producers, contributes to the preservation of traditional knowledge and the cultural heritage and plays a role in the rural development. Despite some disadvantages, uh, GI remains as a valuable form of IP protection today and its importance will also continue to grow in the future. The GI tag is necessary component for creating and preserving the abstracts and the uniqueness of a product's essentials and characteristics. India is not far behind in terms of pursuing this facet of intellectual property right legally. I would also like to say that in India, Karnataka holds the highest number of GIs in the whole country. I hope this video would have been informative for all of you. See you next time. Until then, bye-bye.